a great audience. I must say, I don't think Bachelor's on tonight. Or well, maybe they're going to miss out on the block. <laughs> I don't know what's happening out there. You have an amazing story. And I am so pleased that sometimes when you get to interview a person, you get to a stage where you say, well, who's going to be on? What are they about? What do they do? And I want to start off with this. Your, this is what I read. So tell me if I'm from right with this. Your father wasn't married once or twice or three times. <laughs> Or four times, or five times, <laughs> or six times, <laughs> or seven times, or eight times, or even nine times. <laughs> Your father was married ten times. <laughs> yeah. um, what was it like growing up? Well, I was lucky because my mother was his first wife. Yeah. So, just lucky. so it was like the way life was, but I had a lot of half brothers, step brothers, and I knew all those terms before everyone else. Yeah. Kind of. Because your into accent's it. interesting. Where's your accent from? I was born in Detroit, but yeah. raised in Toronto. My mother remarried mm -hmm. a Canadian, so I was raised mm -hmm. as a Canadian, really. And then um, I met a Kiwi in Europe on a Kantiki trip, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, ended up in New Zealand yeah. in 1988, and uh, 17 years there. Yeah. Had two boys there and moved out to the Gold Coast, Australia, nice. 10 years ago. Mm. First country I chose. Lovely. Love it. New Zealand's beautiful. Yeah. I really love New Zealand. Um, I'm a Kiwi. Yeah. I'm actually a Kiwi with a funny accent. Okay. So. Okay. Because what, we, what we're here to do today is we, we really want to talk about this, uh, this book here. And, and when I was going through this book, I found it amazing. I found it so interesting. And I, I probably think how I want to start is that... <laughs> There was a day where you were just standing in front of the fridge. You open up the fridge. There's nothing in there. There's probably a carrot. Um, you had to find a way to feed the children. And payday wasn't until another two or three days away. So talk to me through how that felt on that day. And then how did you come about doing what you're doing? So maybe just the first one. How did you feel about you know, that day standing in front of that fridge? Well, first of all, let me just take you back a little bit. Because, because that day was where I ended up but before that I had been a very in a very successful um, career in the computer industry and I had run the national division one of the national divisions of Computerland New Zealand with eight offices I had run my own business um, successfully I had been uh, with the financial services company as a technology um, development manager um, database marketing, s staying at the best hotels all around New Zealand, um, you know, company car, everything. And then, uh, and then life started turning, mm. and it kept turning for two years. It just kept going down. And no matter what, it doesn't, didn't matter how many success principles I applied from the 90s, you know, and it didn't matter how many things I did that I already knew, nothing worked. And yeah. it just kept going backwards. And so for me, that was very painful because I thought that I'd figured out how life worked. Mm. I thought that um, I knew. Mm. And, and I wasn't arrogant. I was just determined. And I figured that with my, you know, what I'd, that if I applied myself and if I just had more knowledge, I could figure it out. And I just kept going and I couldn't figure it out. And so that moment mm. was the moment where I realized I just didn't know anymore. I didn't just know. Just give me a time frame. When, when was that? So are we talking like way back when? Uh, global financial crisis happened before that? Way before Way that. Before. Yeah. yeah, I was ready for that when that happened because yeah. it was, you know, it, it was, no, that was uh, 2003, 2004. Yeah. yeah. So the feeling must have been just horrible. You mean, running a, a fairly successful business, mm -hmm. quite comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, you weren't complacent, you weren't arrogant, and then no. boom, the crash happened or your crash happened. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess the book about speed manifesting my question is when i open up a book like that i just go what is speed manifesting so if you can define that for us yeah so so speed manifesting itself is a method and it's what happened was after that very very quickly within that next hour i got the missing piece of the puzzle i figured out what was missing for me within about six months not much more than six months i ended up um, basically living my dream in paradise. We paid off the mortgage, um, we bought a house freehold, cash, we uh, moved to the Gold Coast of Australia, um, and, and I looked back at that and I thought, how did I do that? Because I never wanted to be there again, ever. And I thought, if I knew how I'd done it, I could replicate it. Mm. So I started studying in earnest. I started studying and, and looking for 
what is it that, that I did differently and what was it, what are all the elements. So speed manifesting is a method put together with some foundational work, understanding how it works and then seven steps that if you work on each of them and you know that you've plugged into each of them, then it's not that you have control of your life, mm -hmm. but it's that you have control of the direction that you choose your life to go in. And it all starts with our thinking. See, this is what I find very difficult to get my head around, is that you, you've gone from rock bottom, and within a six-month period, you've paid off your mortgage. I, I don't know. I, I kind of like look at that and I just go, please, just give me what the steps are today, right now, in the next 45 minutes. Because <laughs> I need to get out of here and start working on this. Is this, a, is this a process when you look deep down into true and your heart and you, you say to everyone that's watching this, that you say, everyone who has a belief has their own belief system, but if you're not willing to embrace that new system that you have, then it's not going to work. Mm. There is one step right. that is the most important step for you, and it's the one you're missing. That's what I found. We could wrap this up really quickly, you know. <laughs> We could, we could seriously just wrap it up because I have to go. I have to go. I want to put this step in, but we're not going to, see? We're not going to. And I think this is what's really important about it. When I was reading through the book, and you make it so simple for us, like you do point out, you know, in chapter one, you've got the first step, chapter two, then the second step adds in. And I love the way that you do it, where you put the spaces in that we have to think about what needs to go in there. So help me with this one here. There are lots of you guys around speed manifesting, the secret, mm -hmm. uh, vibration people, auras, um, crystals. I've seen a lot, I've heard a lot. The only person I've really had a chance to sit down with is you. How is this any different from all the others? You'd be surprised because the principles sound very similar. Mm. So for instance, one of the principles is gratitude. And lots of people use gratitude and um, you know, they don't, they don't get what they need in life. And uh, they've come up to me, those people, and said, but I, I am grateful, and I write my gratitude list every night. But for me, I was very ungrateful about life at that point. I was always looking for the next thing. I was always looking to achieve the next thing, so I needed to plug in gratitude. Mm. It was a very powerful concept for me, and that day, that was one of the two steps that I plugged in, and I suddenly, and gratitude in advance. Right. Right? So you're thankful for what you're about to receive. That sounds like, you know, something that you're sitting, sounds like grace, saying yeah. grace at the table. But, but it, it's a mindset that says that you believe it, or at least that you're willing to believe in a possibility. Yeah. Sometimes... A, no, I was just going to say, there's a part in your book where you say that you, uh, you were walking along the street and you saw a five cent piece, you picked up that five cent piece and you were so grateful yes. that the gift was given to you. Yes. See, a lot of people watching this would go, come on man, that's just... That's luck. But you have to be thankful for progress. Right. So if it's in the right direction of where you want to go, and you're really thankful for it, it's not about the amount. No. It's about knowing that you're on your way. Yeah. That's how you get yourself out of a hole. But if I look closer enough, close enough, I'll be able to find those little nuggets of gifts, but not realize that they are, what, gifts that were given to me from where? From the, the universe? Well, all you have to do is decide what you want, okay? That's always step one. You don't have to do the steps in any order, except the first one especially. Find out what you want. Do they have to be realistic? Not necessarily, but you have to believe in the possibility. You don't have to believe that it's... See, I've had things happen to me where I mm. think, I wasn't even thinking that. How did that happen? I didn't believe it could be possible for me. Have you ever had that, where something happened, you just couldn't even believe how great this thing could... You know, how this great thing yeah. could happen, but... You just have to believe in a possibility. You have to believe in... I'm receiving with you. it. Laurie, I'm with you. I'm, and I'm so with you. And mm -hmm. I, I, I want to get to the stage where when someone listens to this back and they say, I want to believe in what Laurie is saying. I want to believe in the things that I'm actually doing. And I believe yeah. that this process works. And I've been trying so hard. I've been doing this for five years and I've been believing it and I've been asking for it. I've been putting the gratitude out there mm -hmm. and nothing has come my way. I just keep falling over, tripping on my feet, and nothing has happened, so this shit don't work. <laughs> is what they say. I know, I understand it. Yeah. You know... No, is that why? Yeah, I just well, heard somebody well, say that's why. One of the things, yeah. that's exactly it, one of the things that um, I got really stuck on was, why am I not successful yet? Mm. I've been at this for a while, why am I not successful yet? This was in the early days when mm. I was just starting, you know, to, to share this with people. And what I realized in that moment was, 
I was not successful yet because I didn't believe I was successful. So I stopped and thought, wait a minute, what have I done to now? Yeah. And I went, wow, so I've got a book out. Yeah. You know, I've been working, I, I live in paradise. I've been, you know, my kids are happy. Um, you know, we've got a lovely place to live in. So I started looking at that actually I'm already successful. Yeah. And success doesn't have to come in its monetary form, does it? Well, it does for people who, yeah. Who want it. <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you know, to have a successful life is a package deal. I call yeah. it balanced wealth. Yeah. There are four areas of balanced wealth that you need. One of them is wealth. Mm. One of them is money, right? And yeah. then there are three others that to have a really successful and satisfying life, you need all four areas. That's part of the method as well, is making sure that um, you're, you're building on a foundation with the seven steps that is going to be satisfying for you. Are there people that, um, I, I, I've just recently found out about Blab, and what that is, it's a, it's a bit of a social media thing where people can jump on, listen to, discussions that are happening from right around the world and there are a lot of people that are on there saying you know live the wealthy life live the spiritual life and in the background I can actually see their house and it's just a mess like it's serious like and, and uh, am I judging absolutely okay I'm judging because they're saying I live in paradise I have this wonderful house and there's a dog with fleas it's kind of like just scratching itself and you're thinking you're not truly going to tell me while you're trying to spout to me that this is working for you when I can see clearly that it's not. Do you think there are some people who, who want to believe that it's happening and want to believe that this will come true for them, but they're not living that dream? I think that no matter what, if you're looking at someone as a mentor, you do need a, a matched value set. Your values are really important, and looking at other people's values, um, you know, people do they're happy yeah. and, as they are, but if you're looking for a mentor and you don't see their lifestyle as matching what you, where you're going, then it's probably a mismatch. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that they're not happy, you know? Yeah. But yes, if they're, maybe their money's put somewhere else. I spent years um, in the back of databases yeah. uh, with a lot of very wealthy people uh, working with financial services. Yeah. And uh, the stories I would hear from the advisors continually, you, this is my richest client and you wouldn't know it because we'd have to find who, who yeah. should we work with. And you know, he drives a you know, 20 year old car and he mm. lives in the same house. You know, I mean, Warren Buffett, same yeah. thing. So different people choose different things. So yeah, if, if you want to work with someone and you see that they're not achieving, it may be that you need someone with the same value set as you. But mm. at the same time, you know, it's about what you want and so if you don't feel successful like for a moment I didn't feel successful I was questioning it I was but I was acting out why am I not successful yet where am I going to get more more mm. more better that was the old stuff yeah but having said that I could then stop and say am I happy with where I'm at and then where am I going mm. so what you want to do is you want to set yourself up so that your thinking is going in a direction that you want to go right and that's really what the work is. But I heard what you say, said earlier, is don't, don't so much think about the now, but think about yourself as in the future. Yes. So I'm not thinking about where I want to head, I'm thinking about I'm already there. You have to accept an identity mm. of, of wealth, of success, you know, of satisfaction, whatever it is. So you have to know that there is a future you that's calling you forward. It's mm. like having a vision for your life. It's, uh, mm. But it's you that's in that vision. Mm. And so you're using your imagination, which is a very powerful superpower. Mm. You know, it really is. It's, w we've lost this, this ability to use our imagination. You know, to, to actually imagine ourselves in a picture that is success, that is satisfaction, that is enjoying a life that we dream about and then allowing ourselves to take steps to move toward it. And that's where the seven steps come in. Mm. So. You, you decide what you want, and then you start to imagine it, and then you thank for it mm. in advance. Bef mm. Thank for what you have, but be in a state of appreciation for anything. It mm. doesn't have to be a reason, but just be in a state of appreciation. Get your thinking straight, get your, your um, talking straight, mm. and then get your actions moving, get mm. your feet moving. Mm. And finally, there's a, there's a concept in the seventh step that is um, about circulation. It's, it's understanding how energy works in the universe, how we all are, are made up, and then how do we work with that to start mm. circulating things? How do we start moving things in our life so we can receive more? Do you ever have doubt? I have doubt, and then I go, I, I talk to my doubt. 
It's a, it's a form of fear, isn't it? Doubt. You talk to your doubt. Yeah. See, we've got all this stuff in our heads still. It doesn't end, you know, the moment that you, that you realize what you have to do. Mm. But you get more choice over it. I won't say control. You get more choice over it when you start to have a conversation with your own thoughts. Mm. Because then they're not real. They're not who you are. They're just your thoughts. And they came from a long time ago, those thoughts. I did read somewhere that someone, it was a quote, it was uh, that someone had said, you are not your thoughts. No. Well, you don't have to be. Yeah. But, but when you, uh, but even me, you know, yeah. when, when I get hooked into something, something's really important to me, uh, it hooks my values or crosses my values, then I'm my thoughts. And I have to then dismantle myself to be able to have more freedom and go, wait a minute, what do I want? That's the first question always. Wait, okay, yeah. what do I want right now? Okay, well, I want, you know, clean, natural water coming through my taps on the Gold Coast, right? Yeah. Because I don't like fluoridation, I go, wait a minute. Okay, that's like, that's not going in a direction that's going to help me. Yeah. That's making me feel like a victim, feeling helpless, mm. as opposed to, okay, so that's what I want, is clean, natural water coming through my taps. Yeah. All right. Got it. Right. And then you just get busy, and then when th things will start to pop up to give you opportunities to make a difference, and certainly that's what we do. Mm. So we don't sit back and say, okay, I've decided on what I want now. Where's my house? You know, where's my Aladdin or where's my genie that is comes that where in? I'm going wrong? <laughs> Seriously. There is, you know, there is some magic. There's definitely right. magic happening in life, but there's logic behind it as well. Like they both operate. So you can have logic and you can have magic working. And then that's when life gets really cool. When things happen where you go, I get it, but I didn't plan it. I didn't create that. Mm. You know, all the gifts come from other people. They come through other people, everything that we get. So how did Laurie Mitchell discover this? At the bottom. Really? <laughs> Having, you know, yeah, and I really saw it. So there was a book that I read um, called The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, 1980s book by Catherine Ponder. And for me, it was that book, you know, for, because I needed the, the points in there. But she was talking about thanking in advance and, and asking for help. Mm. Like asking for help not out of desperation, but thanking and, and asking for help for what you want, which means you have to decide on what you want. If you, ha if you ask, mm. you have to know what you want. Mm. See, there's the, the really, the, the points about the method are you ask, you align yourself with what you've asked for, you take action on it, mm. and then you just allow it. Mm. So, but you have to take action, but then you finally have to let go. So when you hold on too tight, you have to finally let go of stuff, relationships, um, your own thoughts. You just have to let go. Give up almost. It feels like giving up, yeah. and it's not. It's letting you receive what yeah. you've asked for. But you have to line yourself up. You have to take action. You have to do that other stuff too. Can we, a little later, can we try some of this? Like, can we like, do it today? Like you help me with aligning my thoughts and wishes and dreams to maybe my belief system? Mm. Can we try that? Sure. In, uh, in the beliefs that I have, I've yeah. discovered a, a new technique that will shift a belief really quickly, like really, five minutes. Wow. And it's, um, it's really a combination of knowing how energy works, but it's yeah. not an energetic principle. It's, a, it's an, uh, using your imagination. So yeah. your subconscious thinks in pictures and emotions. And so when you use metaphors, they work really well. Mm -hmm. So if you can visualize something, you can move it. The problem I was having was I was working with a lot of clients and they had beliefs and we couldn't shift them because we couldn't find them. Beliefs mm -hmm. do hide and seek sometimes and we just yeah. could not work out what the belief was that was holding them back. So I really worked for two years with clients on looking for a way of doing this. And so when I found it, and, and I'll, I'll tell you the secret if you want to know. You want to know the, the actual secret? Uh, so, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I'll sit here by the breath. <laughs> so there's, there are three steps that I take to it, but, and we can, we can certainly shift it. But the three mm. steps I take focus on, and this is it's a conversational technique, but they focus on the main problem that it causes every other problem in our life, okay? For every human being on this planet, the main problem that we have is our own reactions. And so when we focus on and, and understand what is our reaction, that's mm -hmm. the, the point where we can start making a difference to getting rid of the belief. Because the reaction itself becomes this, you know, this force that takes us over mm. in a reaction. But when we respond, 
when we're free to respond and we're not hooked into the reaction, when we can see the reaction is not us, mm. it's a thought that, you know, it's a thought that has become self-aware. It's this thought that runs around and, mm. you know, and we just need to complete that reaction. And when we do that enough times or when we, when we get one that is a really thick layer of um, our beliefs, right, hooked to the, this yeah. reaction. And I'm talking about things like disappointment, things mm. like um, anger, frustration, just a reaction. What's the reaction to okay, whatever so the for an example would be is that um, I'm, I'm trying to uh, get a new client and uh, we've, we've had some conversation over the uh, months and the client's been kind of very warm and has been giving me all the buying signals and saying, yes, this is fantastic, this is great. And then all of a sudden turns around and says, we've actually gone with another provider. So my reaction to that would be disappointment, heartache, hurt, you know, all those things that you'd be feeling as, a, as a, an emotive part of my being. Yeah. So you're saying what I should do is recognize and acknowledge my thoughts or my reaction Yes. and then do what with it? Okay, so then what you want to do is just imagine it um, personified. So, so the technique itself, it's called speed shifting. Mm. And you literally just stop and you think, okay, the disappointment. Mm. If you were to um, just watch that disappointment, watch yourself being disappointed. Put, you, put it in a room in front of you in your mind's eye. Watch yourself being disappointed. And just mm. allow it to fully express itself. Mm. And so when you're watching yourself being disappointed, it's not you anymore. You're the observer. So, but the other thing is that that reaction has a, a way of expressing itself because mm. our reactions, we keep pushing it down, trying yeah. to you know, manage these nasty negative emotions that are not socially acceptable. Yeah. It's not okay to, to have these emotions. Mm. They wreck relationships. They, you know, they, they cause problems if we actually do get into them. But in the privacy of your own mind, you can stop for a moment. Mm. Just visualize yourself acting out that reaction. Mm. Let it complete itself, right? Mm. Let it have the tantrum in that little room in your mind's eye. And then finally, what you do is you open up uh, any sort of um, hole in the top of the, the room, yep. and you let a swirling vortex suck it out. And you just watch it go until it goes right to the edge of the horizon, to the center of the universe, whatever it works for you. So you could do that right now. So yep. can you see that? Can you see the disappointment? I was just doing it while you were saying it, and I was putting myself in an out-of-body experience, yep. looking at myself in a room, yeah. and then going, I mean, my whole body has shifted. Like shoulders are down, head's down, there's an air of disappointment. And I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, you're a sad case. Well, seriously, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, who are you? That's not you. So then you're saying, okay, now that I've acknowledged that, I've validated that, I'm now going to say, I've got to release all that, just get rid of all that energy. So it's... We'll allow it to go. So, it you to go. Don't, so all you have to do is release it. And then what happens is that vortex swirls and takes it out. You just allow it to go. Now what I'd suggest is that there's another layer, which is uh, self-judgment. Mm. So that um, judging yourself, you let that go into the room. So that's the, that's the, the one that is always keeping you going and, and maybe, you know, driving you hard. So let that one go too. Mm. Let it fully express, but let it go because it's hooked to something else, you mm. see? And we've got this chain that's yeah. just hooked. So let that go too. Yeah. But put it in the room, let it fully express, you know, himself. Okay. So I'm at that judgment. stage where I've let, let that go. But um, you've got to let it, go, like you've got to literally, if you want to, you throw it. Just yes. throw it to the horizon. Yep, so it's, it's out. Now it's, it's gone, it's, it's not part of me anymore. Yep. But I still haven't got the client. Yes. Now, so step two. Well, there's another thing, and this is like, <laughs> here's the thing. Speed it's, do you want Hurry the good up. news and the Do you want the good news and the bad news oh, here? <laughs> just give me the good one. I don't know, I've got time for so the bad So I've just one. given you the good okay. news, which oh, good. is that you can get rid of the reaction that you have. Okay, and what's going to happen is you're going to create a space in your work for a new client. The bad news is everybody has free will. Okay, right. so your client can do whatever he wants, a hundred times the same. What you have control over is your reaction. And when you clear a space in your thinking, it's energetic, but when you create a space in your thinking that releases some disappointment, releases some self-judgment, or that, that driver, you know, then what you'll have is an, a free thinking space for something new, like a client that you, so then you switch, you've got a nice little space there now, you fill it with something called, I love my clients and they love me. Look, what do you want? Fill it with what you want. So I'm getting this, I'm getting this. 
So what you're saying is that it's now gone, but I've left a space open for somebody else to come in. One of my clients that I love. Well, it's to have an experience yes. of something. So I'm allowing now, Gerald, yes. I can't get in there because yes. there's other people that's been trying to get in. I can't get in. I'm waiting for a space in there. Get rid of that one first because there's a bigger one coming. I'm loving this. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. So what's, uh, what, what then happens? What's the third step? Or was that the third step? You said there was a three-step yeah, process. So, you know, what I do is I thank. I thank the, the energy that is, it's a vacuum, but I thank it for, for receiving this and transmuting it back to start again. So all energy continues. It doesn't finish, right? Energy, no matter what. But if you're sending it out of your consciousness in some way, you want it transmuted so that it's, because um, it's, it, it needs to be free. That's why it's causing you so much trouble. If it's a recurring situation, mm -hmm. okay? Things happen randomly. Yeah. We live in a random world of free will people, so, yeah. you know, things will happen. But if you've got this recurring theme, that's a belief, mm. right? And so you look at your reaction to it, and then you basically release that reaction and allow it, once it's fully um, expressed, and allow it. Just allow it to be with your intention allow it to be taken back to where yeah. all things start which is yeah. the beginning of energy can i give you an example today today was quite interesting i met a um a, a good friend of mine we just so happened to be working in the same conference and uh, you do the whole obligatory thing hey mate how you going how long has it been since we've seen each other mm. so yeah it's been a while so what have you been up to oh mate just you know i say keep him busy keep myself off the streets how are you going and he says oh it's i've only worked 10 days this year and I thought, I wonder if, if I'm allowing that person to suck me into his victim behaviour. Does that affect me in any way? Does that make me feel like I should help him, like rescue him and go, oh, that's really sad, mate, come and see me. It'd be nice to help you out. Because I, I get sucked into a lot of that. I want to help people mm -hmm. who are not achieving and I just go, it can't be that hard. But the, the, the whole victim thing starts revolving. Would that person not be, if they were sitting in the audience here today, they would be such a disbeliever of this sort of thing, wouldn't they? Well, I think if they want to change the life, you know, then, then, and they're ready for it, then no matter what, if they just tried one thing and it worked, they yeah. would have a new level of belief. But as far as um, meeting people like that, yeah. it may very well be that that's your next client. Like, if they have a problem, it's your next client, yeah. as long as they ha are, you know, have the ability to pay you. Yeah, yeah. But as you say, you know, maybe, th so you could look at it as, rather than it's a victimization thing pulling you in, it's that, oh, there's my next client. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yay, I'm so happy you're having that trouble. Let me help you. Laura, people that, the people that know me know that, um, you know, I, I get excited when I, I hear things that I think has got potential. Um, and you can't actually feel the goosebumps and the hairs that are standing on the edge of my arms because I think it's fantastic. I want everyone to stick around because I want to ask Laurie after the break when we come back about uh, how important beliefs are. Stick around, we'll be back in just a short moment. Welcome back. We're here with Laurie Mitchell, who is the author of Speed Manifesting, The Method. Laurie, so far I've been just intrigued, and like I said just before the break, um, yeah, hairs are standing up on my arms because I'm excited about maybe the prospect of me um, working through this method. I want to ask you, how important do you think are beliefs that play in this? Well, beliefs are everything. They're, they're the invisible rules that... that our lives are guided by there that's what they are the rules that we've set up and whether it's that we've set them up because we've had our own experience or whether somebody else has taught them to us mm. or whether they've come long before we even came to the world you know mm. and we don't even know that they're set up we believe in certain things and we believe mm. that this is how life happens yeah. <laughs> and it's much more comfortable to live life that life that way mm. you know we assume or, or we try to pretend that uh, that every day is going to be the same yeah. That, or that is predictable at least yeah. and we like that except yeah. we want a bit of change sometimes but in reality that's not true and I'll mm. tell you when we when I lived in Toronto we had blizzards come through I mean like blizzards blizzards yeah. <laughs> like if, if you haven't been through a blizzard it's like you might as well be on the North Pole right. you could not go outside for far without being afraid of not coming back yeah. into your home not in England and yeah. you know a city of um, you know millions of people just shut down 
So yeah. you were at work and everything was going on, and then you, the next day you can't go to work, mm. You're helping people push cars out. I think, you know, and I mean, even the earthquakes in Christchurch in New Zealand, I think closer to home, you know, they just don't know what's going to happen. And I think that's closer to the reality of life. And if we could, and that means that your beliefs get get moved mm. out. And that doesn't have to be tragedy. Mm. Um, natural sort of things actually do kind of get us out of our comfort zone. But yeah. what if we could we could accept that our beliefs could be a little bit more fluid than they are? Yeah. That life could be more fluid. I've heard of the, I've heard of the saying that um, oh Joe down the road there he doesn't have two, two two pennies to rub together, but he'll give you the shirt off his back. The way that I've heard somebody explain it to me is, well, he doesn't have anything, so to give you the shirt off his back really isn't much to lose. And I'm thinking about the person who has everything, mm -hmm. and for them to give the shirt off their back means if they were to equate how much old Joe gave, which was everything, would a person who has everything be willing to give everything away so that they can be generous in spirit and then receive more? I think that's a really personal choice. I think we all have our own value set and um, I, I think that if somebody feels strongly about relief for someone in front of them and they want to give the shirt off their own back, it wouldn't matter what their bank account is. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying, yeah. but I do. I think it's um, uh, the first version of this book I had tithing in there, you know, put 10% away tithing. And what I noticed in my own life that there was an untruth there. Mm. That no matter how much more I gave, it wasn't doing anything. And I had this, oh, if I give, then I'll get more. That's not useful at all. Mm. And I looked back, I went, because speed manifesting isn't, a, this isn't a moralistic way of creating. Mm. This is like, you know, how do gangsters create? How is the creative method working mm. in all situations at all times? That's mm. what I was searching for. So the, the value set or the, that says, you know, honor your neighbor and, you know, um, give and share and be caring and be part of the human family, you know, have that value set. That's not necessarily the creative process. Mm. However, there, there are consequences to living mm. a life that way, and it's not good. But the creative method is about knowing what you want and knowing your own value set and matching your value set without apology, right? Mm. Not trying to fit into someone else's value set, but starting to live life on your own terms. And yeah. then, you know, it's not everybody's going to see that the same way. Because I think when we were at the break, somebody had asked, um, which I thought was a great question, that, you know, if, um, if I'm believing this and I'm truly opening myself up and I'm getting rid of the void and I'm allowing more space to come through, um, the, about the time frame, and nothing's happening and nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, three years down the track, I've kind of forgot about it, I've got on with my day, you know, I'm just walking the street and boom, there it is, it's happened. Is that a point where you say, oh, that's because of what I did three years ago? Or is it just a matter of persistence and opportunity have just met together and boom, we've now hit the point where I'm now in luck? Is this luck or is this part of the beliefs that you're talking about? Well, I think it's small daily actions no matter what. I think you meet your future. And I've had that happen to me. I, yeah. And I mentioned in the book, you know, this this phenomenon that <laughs> that when you actually meet your future it's freaky it really is like you've imagined it you've imagined it actively is that like the the similar to the the vision board where you know I've heard the stories where a person will put a picture of a house up there and you know the next thing they know is that is not only the house similar to what they've wanted but that's the actual house that was up on the board is that living your future that you're talking about it would be. It's definitely part of the imagination process. But I imagined a conversation that I was going to have with my husband at Movie World. So we were at Movie World on holiday before we'd moved. We, our situation wasn't any different, but I'd won a trip to come here for four days. Mm. And so here, there we were, and we were considering moving to the Gold Coast of Australia. And, uh, and I said to him, you know, if we did live here, imagine us come. I use those words. Very powerful words, by the way. Imagine us you know, having this conversation again, but we live here. Imagine us saying, wow, you know, most New Zealanders would love to come to the Gold Coast and take the kids to the theme parks once in their lifetime. And, you know, imagine us saying, we live here and we can do it anytime we want. Mm. And then, I lived here for a while, and uh, suddenly I'm sitting at Movie World, 
And what triggered it was that we were at the Looney Tunes, which is like a little children's area, and they had Bugs Bunny mm. with celery in the garden, mm. celery and carrots. <laughs> you don't see that everywhere else, but I looked at it and I remembered that moment, and I turned to my husband and said, wow, do you remember this? We were having the same conversation. And he said, yeah, I do remember that. And he said, wow. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? It was, it was a turning point for yeah, me yeah. in this method, but that's the final key. You have to imagine your future. You have to imagine yourself in that future. You have to put an emotion in it that is mm. like, yes, that would be so great to be there. And then who knows when it's actually going to be that moment? Who knows? Mm. Mm. I mean, it takes gestation, it's incubation, yeah. it just it's life allowed. rolls. But you, you get busy, you talk to your feet, you get busy. Yeah, and yeah. So what is stopping um, from the normal everyday person from really achieving their dreams? Distractions, and that's called life. Right. Yeah, generally. I mean, our dreams are like the last thing and what we'll get to it as opposed to... I have a diary that has half the, half the page, half the book is one side is your dreams and the other side is your day. Yeah. So that's how important that okay. it should be, you know, but every day work a little bit on that dream, whatever it is, a project that, or a, a task that will take you one step closer to writing the book, yeah. to, you know, going to the Olympics, to doing whatever you need to do, but you mm. do a little bit every day, and then you have all the distractions of family, of work, of everything else. But what happens mm. is the dream then starts to grow, you yeah. know, more and more into your life, and suddenly you're living it, you're mm. living your dream. So tell me, I, I, want to, I want to get started in this. Say I'm, a, I'm the sort of person that says, I want to start this process off. Um, I'm going to jump in my car, get home. What should I be doing tonight or tomorrow morning that gets me on track to start living the life that I want to live? You've got to decide what you want. You have to know what you want first. Right. And that, I, I don't mean that flippantly. No, I mean, no. there are things we be think clear. we want. Clarity, is it? Well, we think we want something and then so we think we want a BMW, L love BMWs, you, th you think you want a BMW and then you get it and suddenly you realize, oh, it didn't make me happy. Mm. Or, oh, that's not what I wanted. Or I once saw someone, a guy that was driving a BMW and he looked happy and he had the girl and I wanted that and so, mm. you know, whatever it is, you have to decide what you want but you have to be sure that it is what you want. Mm. And then, um, you know, in, in terms of the rest of it, it really is do the method. Yeah. It's just work it through. So, ask for it. Write it down, put a dream on one side, maybe the reality on the other side. On Absolutely. The page. Um, you can write a story. Write a story, be very clear about it. Yes, and crystal clear. Crystal clear. And what I mean crystal, so this is where people, it's a, it's a point that people sometimes get confused about because it's like you're crystal clear but it could apply to anything. Yeah. Okay, you can't have one person doesn't work that way. Life is not set up that way. We have free will, but you can have a person with the characteristics and the qualities of that person. Mm. Okay? So, so you write it down in detail and you, you make sure that that story, like the perfect ideal life for yeah. you, can be any time. It can be next, yeah. like it can be next month. I won't say next week because sometimes they need a little bit of time to get ready for uh, receiving yeah. their dreams, but it could be next month um, or it could be 20 years from now in terms of growing into a life that you want. Mm. So you write a story about the feeling mm. that you want to have with the experiences that you want to have with the type of people that you want to have around you. By the way, BMWs are great cars. <laughs> Sponsor? So just, yeah, just put a little, tape. we'll cut that one out. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, okay, I think I'm on track. I think I'm, I'm ready to, to start the process because I am excited about it. Uh, I'm also thinking you did, you did talk about the missing piece. There's, there's always that missing piece that we all look for. And I know you mm -hmm. spoke about it earlier on before we went to the break. Um, can you clarify, make it clarity, crystal clear for me so I know what that piece is? So for me, it was gratitude. It was being in appreciation of what I had. Yeah. It was also letting go. Okay, that's step seven and step three, both of those. So the missing piece is whichever one of the seven that you are missing. So maybe you're an action guy. Maybe you know how to write your goals and you're doing that regularly. Maybe, um, you know, you're, you, you speak in the direction that you mm. want. So your, your words are very powerful. Maybe you're thinking is straight. You get up in the morning and it's all good. You wake up in gratitude and you go, yeah, it's all good, it's all good. Mm. Maybe, um, you know, you can let go. 
maybe you don't worry about how mm -hmm. things are actually turning out right now in trust that mm -hmm. it's all good, you're getting what you want, you, it's all working itself out. But which one is it? If you look at those seven, which one are you missing? Mm -hmm. And maybe there's one that mm -hmm. you haven't ever thought about. And y you don't imagine, you don't spend three minutes a day imagining mm -hmm. about the life. It's been a f this has been a fabulous conversation that I've had with you, and it's been a, it's been a terrific honour to actually sit on, on the couch with you. Um, if you've got a story to share that you would like to join us on The Point TV, we would love to have you here to, uh, to share your cause or story. So everyone, could you please put your hands together for Laurie Mitchell, the author of Spotted Manifesting. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah.